François Lecomte, and I own a company called Paramount Broadcasting Communications, LLC. It's Kellen, and today on Diversified Game, I have Chief Francois. Yes, you guys, you know, my French is terrible, so I'll, I'll leave it at that, unless I need to catch a cab in Yaoundé, Cameroon. But he's going to give us the game on what it's like to own your own TV station, how he got to where he's at. I met him at the Miami Dade event. He was part of the Broward County bunch. I'm part of Miami Dade. And it, we we're at the hockey uh, event for black hockey. They're, you know, giving us the game on black hockey and trying to get more people included in hockey at the Florida Panthers. So very nice man. And he's going to show us like, give us the game, Francois. How are you doing today? I'm doing fine. How are you doing, my friend? Oh, man, the day is blessed, you know, a blessed day. We're here. Every single day we hear is a blessed day, except, except one thing. I didn't know I was a part of Broward. I thought I was a part of South Florida. <laughs> Whichever chamber. I'm part of so many chambers, I might have got it wrong. Listen, I know we have a Broward chapter of Black Chamber. We have Palm Beach and, and Miami did. But at the end of the day, this is the whole South Florida. When we're looking at the whole market, you know, we have to be able to maximize the numbers we have. Then uh, that's what I'm looking at. Amen. Well, and, and I just for any confusion, because sometimes I talk about Palm Beach Chamber or I'm a new member of the Miami. Oh, no, 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 no. You're right on target. No, it's you're right on target. We have Palm Beach Chamber. Mm -hmm. Broward Chamber and Miami Dade Chamber. They are all black chamber of commerce. We You're also right. have, it's, we have a new one though. It's called the South Florida Black Chamber. And um, they're more in Martin County, but they've also done events recently in Palm Beach. So things are growing. Yeah. But from my perspective, I look at the whole South Florida as one market. That's Amen. my market. That's my market. That's the market I want to control. That's it. <laughs> yes, so yes. I am the South Florida guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, tell us, you know, how yes. did you go from owning a, a network? That's not an easy thing to do. And, and many people have wanted to, but they say, what do I need? My own satellites, my own. What do I need to do that? How did you get there? Well, uh, first, it's all about the dream. It's about the dream to provide access to your people. And when I, when I talk about my people, I talk about black, period. I don't care whether you were born in Haiti, you were born in Jamaica, you were born in the United States or Africa. At the end of the day, we are one. That was my dream, to give my people access to a platform where they can provide their own content. When you're looking at the market now, a lot of people are talking about social media. You're talking about YouTube, Facebook, uh, uh, Netflix, Hulu. But when you get your people into those big companies to perform most of the time, they're not going to keep the essence of their content. Most of the time, they don't have control over what they produce, the sacrifices they have to accept in order to get to that level. At the end of the day, who make most out of their content development? Who make most out of their sacrifices is the owner of those platform. That was the dream. That's exactly what I've been working on for the past 10 years to be able to be where I am today. 
let me just say, there are a few uh, Black-owned licenses of TV stations in the United States. It so happened that I'm one of them. I have two licenses, and both of them are in South Florida. One is in Miami-Dade County, and the other one in Fort St. Lucie. And with the new technology that we are going to put in place, and FCC, of course, requires us to do it. This is what we call ATCS 3.0. So we will create that platform for all Black people, not only here in the United States, but throughout the world, where Black are performing, Black are developing content, and Black are working this is what we want this to be all about at the end of the day. And uh, people remember, he said 10 years. It doesn't happen overnight. You've heard that over and over. The dream can take a while, can take a decade. Can you talk about what it takes to even get a license? Because so many people on YouTube right now making content, I deal with them all the time. And people would just love to know what are the steps to be able to get a TV license and how much money? Because I tell them, you know, you're going to need probably at least half a million dollars. And they say, huh? And they get, you know, intimidated. But what would you say is the first steps for somebody who would want to follow your footsteps and say, I'm in Kentucky. I want a TV license. How do I do it? Francois, you have to write a book for me so I can learn. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can teach you step by step how to go about doing it. First of all, it's, it's access to capital. As you know, in the United States up to now, although things uh, got a little bit better than we used to be a year ago, or two years ago, or five years ago, or 50 years ago, things get a little bit better. But access to capital. That's one of the biggest challenges we're facing as Black people. To get a license is simple. As long as you have money, you can buy it. There are licenses available in all the market. It depends on the market you are. That will determine how much money you will have to put out to get your license. If you're looking at South Florida, South Florida is the 16th largest market in the United States. A license costs a lot of money, lots of millions to get that license. Whereas if you are in a very small market with a couple hundred, uh, couple, uh, hundred thousand people, you can get a license for a lot cheaper than that. So what I advise uh, most of the people who talk to me about it, the first thing I said, I said, you need to sit down, put some time, get you a business plan. And when you have your business plan, the way you go about it, about doing it, you do it as a way to raise money. That will be heavily financial driven. And once you have that, then you figure it out how you're going to raise money. As I told you, this is not going to be easy. You need to have a market. You need to make sure the market you want to be in, whether or not that market is open to the content, that you said you're going to have on your TV. Those are the things that you need to work on. Let me add something to what I just said regarding your business plan, regarding of uh, getting a, a license, right? When you get a license, you know, you just have a signal. A signal worth nothing if you don't have content. If you don't have good quality content, if you don't have content that people in the local market that you are going to broadcast from are looking for. So the advice for my brothers and sisters who are out there uh, watching our conversations is not to be looking to get a license, is to looking for ways, looking for means to develop your content. If you have good content, I'm sure that someone like me, or Baron, or and or, or, or any other uh, 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 owners will be coming after you to get your license and put it on that path. So that's even more important than anything else. Good content, it's key, but I, I wanna make sure we don't have a whole bunch of my YouTube friends, you know, trying to call you or email you because they'll say, look, I got content. Um, what will you give me? Because I, you know, I'm trying to get on TV. 
how, what's a way somebody can pitch? Let's say there's a popular YouTuber out there. What's a good way for them to pitch to you? Because, you know, YouTube is always looking for the, a lot of the negative, a lot of the, you know, flash, but there's some people who have good content where they're actually teaching you something. We like to say edutainment. Um, what's a good way for them to pitch to you? Because you can't buy up everything. You don't know what's going to work and what's not going to work. And sometimes you may not buy. Sometimes you can negotiate. Sometimes you can give the, that, that, that producer an avenue to expose his or her content. And, and most of the people who have been in touch with me, they usually send me a demo. I look at what they have. And depending on the quality, depending on something that I, I, I want, depending on something that I can sell to the market, then I will consider it. I will have a follow-up conversation. I'm looking at whether or not you can produce enough, you know, how many hours you have, what is your capability of producing. If I were to sign you, then we take it from there. But in my case, I'm not talking for anybody else. It's my case. In my case, if I get a demo, I like it, then I will follow up with you. If not, awesome. if not, if you send me a demo, <laughs> there is no response. You know, there is no interest. Got you, got you. And, you know, I know you're on channel 18 in, in, South, South, in, in South Florida. 18 uh, from Homestead to, uh, uh, to Palm Beach. On, on the south side, and 11 from West Palm Beach all the way up to Vail Beach. Now, what type of content do you like or what's of your interest right now? You want reality TV or do you want, you know, WrestleMania 3, 4, 5? What type of content piques your interest right now? Right now, I'm looking at more family oriented that are very informative, because I'm looking for something unique. I'm looking for something that I, I'm looking for stuff that I can pitch to South Florida families. So the uniqueness of what I'm looking for, that's gonna make me very competitive in the market that I'm in now. Because when you're looking at all the other coding could buy stuff, there are so many of them on Facebook, so many of them on YouTube. So if people want to watch those, they can go there. Secondly, I'm looking for producers that are willing to go off YouTube or Facebook because I don't want anyone to see what I'm buying. They're already out there for free. So it will not make sense. It will not be in my interest. Okay. And I can already hear a YouTuber say, well, if it goes on your show and then it goes on YouTube, is that not a double dip of potential money? Well, if they want to see it that way, they probably will not make money with me mm -hmm. because I'm selling it to advertisers here. You see, at the end of the day, this is what they're going to ask me. How many people are watching? Mm -hmm. If they don't watch my station, they go on YouTube and watch it, then I will not selling it. You understand what I'm saying? At the end of the day, they come down to money. If you cannot make money with it, why would you spend money buying something that you cannot sell? That's the yeah. issue. Yeah. You no, know, and, and let me clarify just in case, because I remember, you know, being um, two decades doing doing this um, entertainment. I remember when, you know, the big, I don't want to say names, but the, the, the big boys would say, yeah. no, nah, we don't want to be on YouTube because, you know, how, you know, they would say the same argument, but now, you know, you have places like CNN and MSNBC and everybody is fighting to be on YouTube because YouTube will send you a $50,000 check if you get the numbers. So you can, you can do both. Um, does that not work in, you know, the South Florida market? I, 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 my bro, if you're looking at the train is, reversing now very slowly what you see you see cnn plus cnn is becoming a streaming right mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. see paramount plus right because mm -hmm. everyone now trying to build their own platform so they can attract the viewers towards that it doesn't make sense because 
you don't you 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 don't really own your content when you put it on YouTube. Of course, when you have the numbers, when you start in getting you know uh, fifteen thousand, twenty thousand, thirty thousand, then you're getting a little bit of money from YouTube, but you do not control your content. Whereas with me, we can sit down, we negotiate, and if there's value on your content, residual income could be a part of it. You know, do you want to have $100 once and for all, or do you want to make $50 for the next 10, 15, 20 years? That's the cost benefit analysis they're gonna have to make when they're talking. Yes, and I, I tell all my YouTubers, YouTube is great. It's been good to us, TikTok, all those things. But there's nothing like having your own site, your own server, and being able to have control because you still have to follow rules. And let's be honest, places like YouTube, you have to split a big chunk of your money, even your super chat money. So you, you need to have your, your I mean, your you don't own. even know how much YouTube uh, 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 charge the advertisers to be there. They just send you a check. Period. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Well, you know, this whole thing, it can be in business. It can be a, a, a pimp whole game is what I say. You have to decide which one you want to be. You yeah. know, do you, <laughs> do you want to be in control or some people are happy? Hey, daddy has bought my groceries for the month and I'm happy, yeah. you know, and that's all that, you know, they care about where other people say, no, I want to be able to provide my own groceries and do my own ledger and, and everything else. So it's, it's definitely, I, I, I get it. Now I, I have to ask you, because I know the, the Haitian population, you are right there on the pulse. We have never in American TV ever seen anything positive on Haitian family. No, not even Pickley's, not nothing. There's been nothing positive on Haitian in English. So tell me, do you have any shows that have, you know, maybe subtitles or have been, you know, they, you've dubbed them where people can watch channel 18, whether they're in South Florida or maybe other markets that are positive about a Haitian family in life? Well, I mean, there, there are some that are going to come pretty soon. Stay tuned. You're going to okay. see it. Yeah. And don't forget, they have a taste for white clay for it. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever White Cliff says something that's positive about us, you know, Osaka. <laughs> but we're yeah. going to have some pretty good content that are going to come pretty soon. Yeah, we're going to see that. Don't worry about it. We're working on it. Okay. Because it bothers me when all people can say are the greetings uh, uh, and then they ask about the earthquake or ask about, you know, um, unfortunately, you know, the, the yeah. politics. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. So, unfortunately, we as well. Uh, did a very poor job as far as selling the bad part of the country. But I mean, w when you get outside of the crisis that the country have been through for so many years, this is one of the most beautiful piece of lands I've seen. And I've been to a lot of places throughout the world. And, and it's so uh, unfortunate. So we have yet to figure out how can we sell that to the outside world. But I think that, that that is coming. Believe me, this is coming. Anybody listening, and this might be something uh, we talk about later. We, I've told you, we do tours. We're going to South Africa in two weeks. Um, and we've gone to Kenya and brought groups of 30. I have asked my Haitian families, and I say, tell me when we can put something together for Haiti and you know, let that diaspora. You know how much money we have here in America that... Ah. When Biden and Trump or whoever gave you that stimulus check, people, I saw the stores, the shelves were empty. Trump was right. The TV shelves were empty. People were buying from a 50 inch to a 70 to a 90 inch. If we could take that money and go into a place like Sierra Leone, Salon Bobo, or a place like Haiti and really live, because we don't really have a full life here. It's a mouse on the wheel, we're constantly running. But if you can yeah. actually just sit down, live, enjoy food, enjoy fried fish, grilled fish, roasted fish with the pepper. The European pickles, you name it. <laughs> yeah, the, I don't yeah. put the pickles. Yeah. I got the, yeah, gotta have the yeah. pickles. You know, I keep it in the back of the refrigerator because uh. the older the pickles, the better we know. Um, yeah. 
tell me what's a community give back that you are doing or that you would like to do in the future? Well, uh, I'd like to engage the young people uh, to do more for themselves, to do more for the country. And I want to see the young people get more into businesses than anything else. Because at the end of the day, when you have your business, you control your own destiny. That's one of the things that I'm going to put a lot of emphasis on. And I'm going to have in my building pretty soon, we're going to have areas where small entrepreneurs, I don't care the industry they're going to be in, they will have a space to come and do their thing as well. This is one commitment I made to my young people here in South. Oh, wow, wow. Do you have any intern opportunities for those who are in school and say, you know what, I haven't been able to get my hands on any, you know, opportunities and I just need some experience. Uh, any opportunities for them? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, they're going to be coming pretty soon. As I said, I'm just uh, going from one building to another one. You know, I'm looking to get a bigger building where we will be looking to work with the uh, middle school and high school you know it's amazing to see how many high school uh, have uh, broadcasting opportunities for their students so i will give them that platform to showcase their skill set and at the same time work with local uh, 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 school uh, broadcasting school in the area so people can come and do internship with our company yes we're gonna have that as well What's most important to you, the driving factor in doing this type of business? You've done other things, you know, in life. What was, what was it about TV? Was it the content creation? Was it being able to control it, giving opportunities? Like, what was the thing that said, you know what, I have to do this? Well, I mean, you, you have to understand the mindset of a business person. Whenever there's a market, why? Right? The market is profitable. You're going to see all kinds of business people looking at it and say, how can we get there? How can we make money? How can we expand it? You know, the whole entertainment, uh, uh, it's a market that is open. It's a market that is very profitable. But in my case, since I've been here, uh, there was a black TV station, UPN, you know, when they merge with CW, since then we don't have any black TV station for the highway. So we have uh, Haitian, Jamaican, uh, all kind of ethnic groups uh, getting different, you know, few hours here and there to do their thing. So I look in and I say this, this market is pretty much open for someone like me since I own the platform, since I have the background, I can move them, not only give opportunities for other people to get in and do your thing, but at the same time, we can control our own destiny. We can control the quality of content that we can put on the air for our people to see, for our people to relate to, and for our people to appreciate. Isn't it amazing when you talk about UPN and CW that black content built those things up just the same way you know black content saved fox and then we see what fox news and how bad they forgot where their bread was buttered you you, if, you, <laughs> you will never remember no at the beginning when fox just started yeah i'm yeah. glad i'm glad you remember that yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's just amazing because even yeah. like with sports, how we can't get a black NFL owner, but if black folks stop playing in the NFL, there's no NFL. They, they, they forget. Do you ever get to remind people who runs culture, who runs what the kids call swag and say, yeah. if not for us, you have a very bland uh, pot, you know, they call it a melting pot, but it's very bland without black people and black people from all over, you know, the world. Yeah. But I mean, at the same time now we can look in at, we see, you know, the, the changes are coming. The trend are going to different direction. You see, when you see black tech week in Miami, you know, that sort of open your mind. You say, okay, this is where we're going. Right. But at the mm -hmm. same time, there are a lot that we need to be doing and we will be doing those. I'm looking at the black uh, 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 movie in South Beach. Come on, we can do it in Miami Gardens. 
right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we can do Why it in not? C we can do it in C strong, you know, African American Research Library, or we can do it in Loader Del Lakes or Loader Hill, you know, cities or municipalities that have a significant number of black people from all over the world who live there. So those are the kind of things we're looking at, and hopefully we will be able to bring them home. Now, I haven't had cable in over a decade. Many people have cut the cord. Um, the metaverse, you know, it's here in different forms, in different areas. Where do you see the, the future of TV? Um, and how do you prepare for things that, you know, maybe only the, the kids are into right now, but this is how they grew up. So it's going to grow with them. How, how do you prepare for that? I'm glad you asked me that question because I remember 2012 when I announced, you know, my first stations over the year in South Florida, a lot of people thought I was crazy. And I told them, you know, cable is going to die slowly, but surely. And I explained exactly the basic economics for it. You know, at some point it's becoming too expensive. And people don't have the time to go and watch 50 channels that they give you in one package or 200 channels they're giving you in one package and you're paying a lot of money for. A lot of people thought I was crazy until the numbers are start, started coming out. And they saw the trend and they, they, they called me from time to time and say, hey, you are correct, it's coming down. But I'm doing exactly the same thing with streaming system, right? When you're looking at streaming, there was a time when it made sense for people to just say, yeah, I'm getting off cable. I'm going to be on Netflix. I'm going to be on, on Hulu. There are so many of them now. Streaming services are becoming as expensive as cable was just a few years ago. That's where I come in. I combine linear TV. TV that you can watch over the year for free without having to pay for it with the streaming system as well. And the streaming and the linear, they're going to be portable. You can be wherever you are. You're going to watch it and you don't have to pay for it. That's what we're going to provide. That's where we're going. That's why we're going to be one of the most competitive company in the area. And the good news for your viewers or your listeners, the good news, we will be able to provide internet services as well. I know a lot of people say, hey, I don't need video from, from Compass, but I need the internet. I will provide that to you as well. <laughs> so yeah. it's the whole package that I'm giving you. The whole package is coming soon and very, very cost effective. And it's needed. Um, and what can the people do, you know, whether they are listening on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, or our latest partner at AYV Radio in Freetown, Sierra Leone, or YouTube, what can people do to support this, you know, um, whether they live in South Florida or um, abroad even, you know, how can they help? Well, I want them to watch. I want them to get off cable, cut it, you know, get your... TV antenna, get your free over the air stations. At the same time, I want you to look for companies such as mine and give them the credibility they're looking for. The credibility we're looking for are numbers. The investors, when I pitch to them, when I make presentation, when I'm looking, most of what I'm talking to them are still coming up. A lot of them probably thinking that at the beginning I was dreaming until now, now they're seeing it. Now they're more willing, they're more open. Now I'm raising a little bit more money than I used to in the past. So it's coming. The more numbers we have, the more people we have that watch what we're doing, the better off we're going to be as far as raising the money, bringing more resources on so we can. Um, first okay now you're back you're back okay oh i'm sorry yeah can you hear me now i hear you good yeah i don't i don't i don't know where i i i, I was frozen 
No, yeah, you said more, more, more TV yeah. services, and I, I got that part. Where can they go? Um, is it pbchdtv.com to catch the streaming, or is there an app? Uh, no. Uh, uh, now, if you are in the local market, you get your antenna. You need to scan and pick up our station, WDFL Channel 18. If you want to have to watch on our streaming, now you need to go to our website, wdfltv.com, to get our programs. And the app is coming pretty soon. I'm working on that. It's going to be WDFL Plus. That is coming soon. Man, well, big things are coming. You guys are going to have to stay tuned, and you're going to have to make sure you hit those links in the description so you can learn more. Some of you, you want to be TV stars. Why don't you learn the business from the ground up and, and you know, it, really get it. So I thank you for taking the time. What would you like to leave the people with? What I want them to understand, what I want them to understand, we as a people have to work together for years. When I was a young kid growing up in Haiti, even when I was in my early 20s, when I came to the United States, I heard the same thing over and over and over again. We cannot work together. We do not work together. We don't create opportunity for one another. It's time to change that. I make the first step. I open up my arm. I open up my business. I want every single one of us to come and work together. We work together. We are becoming that force that the business world need to work with and bring the resources to do. We can do it if we can dream it. And when you dream, if you don't share your dream, it stays a dream. When you share your dream with other people, it becomes a reality. That's what I'm sharing with them today. Amen. With unity, we all win. Hashtag that, y'all. Make sure if you do nothing else, you share this with somebody. It will change their life. Be blessed. Hi, everyone. Have you ever been curious about visiting Africa? Which African country were you interested in? Kenya, Nigeria, Uganda, South Africa, Ethiopia. Which country are you interested in? My good friend, Kellen Cash Coleman, came up with a course called My First Trip to Africa that'll guide you through this process. It's only $20, and in this course, you'll learn about passports, visas, vaccinations that you need before you go there, as well as a budget, uh, how much the trip is going to cost. He also talks about what you should pack, uh, what you should take with you, how you should travel on a budget. Did you know that $100 US dollars is worth 1,000 South African Rand and over 10,000 Kenyan shillings? So imagine what you can do with $100 back home. I say back home because I'm from Sudan, I'm African, I already know how it's like. I know that you know when you convert Canadian and American money, it goes a long way when you're traveling across Africa. So if you're curious, um, if, if Africa is a place that you've always wanted to go, always want to move there, Kellen Cash is the person to ask. Check out the course, there's a little preview you can listen to um, before you actually purchase it. If you're interested in this course, visit www.diversifiedgame.com. Don't miss out. Game over.